afternoon. Um, my name is Brian Avery and thank you for coming back to our channel to follow the next stage of our story as in our home apiary looking after our bees. At the moment for those who have been following us we've only got the one colony in this um, double colony so we haven't got anything in this side at the moment, um, long hive. So what I'm going to do today is just a quick in inspection but by that I mean I'm literally just want to move a couple of frames around um, I'm not going to be looking into too much detail. I'm not worried about queen cells at this moment. I'm not worried about Varroa. And the reason I'm not worried about Varroa is that I've just had a quick look at the board below here. Just like I did last week, if you were following that video, there's not a single mite on there. And because of that, and in all the inspections I've done to date, um, I always keep an eye out, um, as I'm sure we all do, um, for potential varroa or other disease we smell can we smell anything foul like them for which would be an indicator potentially of American fowl brood so um, I, I haven't seen anything like that nor chalk brood or anything in this hive so I'm not going to be overly concerned about this it is a relatively new colony I only got it in July doesn't mean that means it's going to be not have any varroa but what I'm saying is I've never seen anything on these bees um, even on the uncapped cells when I'm having a look at that particularly if it was drone cells have a look at those then I wouldn't be you anyway, I'm gonna zip up it is now September the 11th it's a lovely Saturday afternoon it's sunshine as you can see it's in Celsius terms, it's 21 degrees, which means it's about 71, 72 degrees in Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna open this up. It's the beginning of autumn. I'm not, even though I can see the bees are bringing in pollen, I can also see that they are bringing in um, some nectar because last week when we had a look, there was definitely new nectar flowing. I haven't been feeding for a couple of weeks now, so but I still want to get them ready for autumn. So I've got a bucket full of um, two-in-one syrup. If you want to know how to do that, I will put a link to a previous video uh, of where I'll show you how you make that very, very simply. And the key thing when you're feeding with syrup is that you want syrup which the bees are going to like. I'm using just plain sugar, um, cane sugar, which I, yeah, as I said, you look at the video, and I put a little bit of acid in there. Now that acid is um, apple cider vinegar and the reason that is more natural in my view than using some other um, that you could use but we've all seen bees on apples and wasps and things on which are um, you know, like yellow jackets you can see them actually on apples and things when they've fallen on the ground so we know it's not going to do them any harm but what that acid does and does help is two things one it helps prevent a, um, say mold potentially sort of growing in that if it was left in there but that shouldn't happen if you've got um, two in one syrup which is what I'm going to feed them today but what the acid also does is helps break down the sucrose, which is what normal cane sugar is, or most normal sugars are, and breaks it into the two constituent parts. It will hydrolyze the sucrose. What it means is splits the sucrose into two different sugar molecules. One which is fruit fructose, which is in fruit, as it sounds like, and the other is glucose. Both of which are the types of sugars which the bees really um, take. If you don't put the uh, sugar, um, the, the acid in a, in a syrup, it will just be sucrose. Um, it might, some of it might break down into their constituent parts, but not as much. But what the bees will then have to do is spend time by putting it into their guts, adding enzymes to that, and then um, and those enzymes will then do that conversion to it. Whereas if you already have it con uh, turned into that, and that's what's called inverted sugar. Um, so a lot of the bee syrups that you can buy now are inverted sugars and uh, that is what they're actually using it's glucose and it's um, sucrose predominantly so but the way I make it is also very easy to make and it's also um, should be relatively safe for the bees I have no concerns about the way that it's made it's um, been made like that by beekeepers for donkey's years so I'm just going to now go through the hive so I'm going to put the hood on and we're going to dive in so let's dive in and have a quick inspection and by that I mean as I mentioned at the outset I'm not looking to do anything as far as as too surprising to the bees I'm not going to go through looking for the queen I'm not going to be looking at the um, any sort of brood per se make sure whether she's laying or not it is September so I'm not too fussed about what they're doing there but what I do want to do based on what I saw last week which is the last inspection is I would like to just move one of these two frames which hadn't yet been really had any work being built on them no comb 
is just switch it around with the frame beforehand. So long as that frame, which last week had no brood on it, was just full of honey stores, I would like to put this one, one of these, before it. And the reason I want to do that is that that will mean that they will hopefully build this out a bit more and give them a bit more chance of they building that comb, which they should be able to do because it'll be like simulating a flow of honey happening. What it will mean is it will mean that they will start pulling it out. And if they pull out these frames out a bit more, so these are the wax coated um, plastic frames, and the reason I use those, it just makes it a bit easier to see any um, any bees um, as in brood. So out we go, girls. There we are. Okay, so it just means it would be easier to see any eggs that they actually do have. So I'm going to put those in there. You can see they've already started drawing that one out on this side and filling it up with nectar. So that's again just more evidence. If you have a look at last year's, last week's video, there's hardly anything, there's nothing on this side. So again, they are already drawing those out. So I'm going to put those back in there just for that purpose. Because if they do keep drawing those out, there'll be more stores there, which will be better for them in the winter. So that's the reason I'm actually doing this. Now once I've done that, that's it, I'm done. I'm closing up. I said I'm not going to be too bothered about looking for queens to see if she's laying anything. She was doing lots of laying last week. There are lots of eggs that I could see last week. So we know there's going to be more bees emerging in the next few weeks. But we'd expect that because there's going to be the queen, the queen will be laying eggs, particularly for those bees that are going to be overwintering with her. So now I'm also going to so I'm just moving them all away and then I'm going to feed them. So now we're going to do some syrup. What I've made is a two-in-one as I mentioned. Please feel free to go and have a look at the previous video. I will put the link on for you to actually have a look. So all I'm doing, oops, okay so I've got my feeder. This is called an English feeder. I'm now going to feed the, um, the bees. I'm putting that over the center. I will just put this on just in case I spill any because I don't want the syrup to go down directly down. And what I've done earlier today was make up another batch of two in one sh uh, sugar. So that's to, as an idea two pounds of sugar for two pound so for one pound of water. And I use just a kettle full of water and stir it in with a little bit of vinegar. Uh, that's apple cider vinegar. Um, so, or in metric, one litre um, of water, boiling water, or nearly boiling water, to having two kilograms of sugar. And then a little bit of the, there we are, a little bit of the apple cider vinegar. Just close it up so that make sure that these will get in there. Now what I've tried to do is make sure that there's nothing around the bees because I don't want them to sort of encourage robbing and because it's actually in here one trick I had which you can see from previous video just put one or two little drips in that will just encourage the bees to sort of come up and start feeding just the lid that will help keep a few ants off it's not foolproof as you've seen from a previous video but what I have done as well in light of me putting some new syrup in I've gone round all of the legs again of this hive that's all four um, with a bit of Vaseline petroleum jelly and that should hope, hopefully stop the majority if not all of the ants coming up to hive. And that's it for um, feeding and that's it, just a few minutes, leave the bees to do what they do best. Please enjoy your beekeeping.